Hi guys, my name is Matti Sulanto and in this video I'm gonna tell you why phone cameras will never replace real cameras. It happens every now and then that maybe some pretty famous YouTuber, for example, tells you that phone cameras even today are so good that they are going to replace some real cameras, especially micro four thirds cameras, because the sensor is so tiny. But in this video, I have at least two reasons why that is not going to happen. And the phone cameras are really good these days. There's no denying that. The image quality is really, really good and there are tons of awesome features on them too. And the video features are quite awesome too. 4K 60p video is like standard feature on most phone cameras these days and some of the slow motion features are, to be honest, quite stunning too and you have your phone all the time with you, so there's no need to carry any extra gear. So it's convenient to use and uh, it's easy to share your photos right away using the same device and you can also do the post-processing on the same device and you have multiple, multiple uh, applications to choose from to do the post-processing. And the screen is big and bright, so it's easy to see what you are trying to capture. And I just printed these two pictures. These are from a phone camera. And believe me, these prints look absolutely stunning. But most people never even print. They only publish on social media platforms. And the technical requirements for those platforms are not that demanding, because the image size is relatively small. But still, in my opinion, phone cameras are far from perfect for real photography. And here's why. Okay, let me show you something with my phone. Hold on, where did I put it? I never forget my phone. Okay, let me find my phone and I'll be right back. The first reason is the ergonomics. While it's true that you probably have your phone with you all the time, but still it's relatively slow to make the phone camera ready to take a picture. Let's say the phone is in your pocket. It takes quite a long time to take it out of, the, out of your pocket and uh, turn on the camera and take a picture, especially if something is happening in front of you all of a sudden. Or if you are browsing, say, social media uh, somewhere and then you see something is happening, um, it's relatively slow to make the camera ready to take a picture. If you have a real camera, you can have it in your hands and you can have the power on already. And even if the power is off, it's really quick to turn the power on, lift the camera uh, to your eye and snap the picture. Very, very uh, fast and effective. Okay, found it. It was in my camera bag for some unknown <laughs> reason. And I'm trying to take a picture here and I want to use the Lightroom app because that allows me to get raw. And um, I'm trying to use the exposure compensation, but it's really difficult with these uh, gloves. And these are uh, the special type of gloves that have these touch uh, sensitive uh, fingertips. They are compatible with the touch screen. But still the precision is far away from uh, bare fingers. And um, whenever I try to apply the, the exposure compensation, it just uh, pretty much goes anywhere it wants and not where I want. But fortunately, I also brought my Lumix, which is just a pleasure to use because of all the proper buttons and dials um, that I can use to control all the uh, values, uh, exposure values I want. And I also have a telephoto lens because I need to make a telephoto picture. And the controls are not good on any phone. If you have to adjust any exposure values, for example, or even the focus, it's quite uh, slow. 
and uh, especially if you have to adjust uh, some of the exposure values that's not easy and not uh, convenient or practical. In a real camera you have proper dials or buttons that are easy to use in any situation, easy and fast to use. And I have this Lumix 52 200mm telephoto for a reason today. This is a location where I often come to take a telephoto picture because I want to see how the landscape changes over time. And right now it's particularly interesting because they are tearing down one building back there to build a new one. And um, I can't use my phone because so far there are no long telephoto lenses for any phone camera. But I'm gonna take the picture now. It's such a pleasure to use a real camera. And I can choose, of course, any lens I want to, which is not possible on a phone camera. There are some attachments and add-on lenses, but the selection of those is <laughs> pretty far away from, for example, the uh, Micro Four Thirds uh, lens lineup. And there's no viewfinder on a phone. While the screens are really good these days, but sometimes still in bright uh, sunlight, it can be difficult to see what you are, how to compose. You can't, you just can't beat a good viewfinder um, in certain situations. And one more thing, there is no tilt screen on any phone, at least so far. So if you wanna shoot from low angle or high angle, it's uh, not easy to compose or see what you're actually trying to capture. I wanna take this low angle picture of the church tower, but I can't do it on my phone because I can't see the screen if I tilt the camera upwards like this. But fortunately I have my Lumix with me with the tilt screen or flippy screen or whatever. It's so easy, I can see uh, the, the screen and I can compose and just take my picture like that. It just can't beat a real camera if uh, you wanna make some <laughs> real pictures. And the reason number two, the image quality when going gets tough. Image quality on any smartphone camera is really good whenever there's a, a lot of light. But as soon as the light levels drop, so does the image quality of a smartphone camera. It drops too. And there are some pretty advanced night uh, photography features on most phone cameras. But even so, the tiny, tiny sensor just can't uh, do miracles when the light levels drop under a certain threshold. I just recently saw some pictures from Apple's uh, night mode challenge, some awarded pictures, and those pictures looked really really good in small size, but uh, when I viewed them a little bit bigger, not even uh, full screen on my 4K monitor, I, I started to see uh, that the image quality deteriorated pretty quickly. And uh, the 4K screen is about 8 megapixels and uh, I was not viewing them even at that size. And it's true, I've said it many times, that the technical quality is not the most important in every photograph. Uh, it's much more important to have something like a story in the picture, nice light, good composition and all that, but still it doesn't hurt if the technical quality is also decent. And who knows, maybe you want to print that picture a little bit bigger than postcard or something, and then it's good to have a little bit tolerance in that uh, image file. And especially if you need to use a tripod, that kind of devaluates the upsides of, uh, of a smartphone because you're going to have to carry extra gear. I think a phone camera only makes sense if you have minimal amount of accessories and very small accessories with you. And even that tiny, tiny Micro Four Thirds sensor is really huge compared to any smartphone sensor. 
So there's just no way a tiny sensor like that is gonna deliver better image quality than a bigger sensor. It's just a fact. And let's not forget about the awesome image stabilization of some real cameras like the dual IS of Lumix cameras and there are some other cameras too that have a really really good image stabilization that lets you shoot really really long shutter speeds handheld. You can't do that on a phone. So there you have it. Two or actually quite a bit more reasons why phone cameras will not replace any real cameras uh, at least anytime soon. Thanks so much for watching and see you in the next one.